Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. I am um, I'm I'm sleep deprived today. I'm not capable. I have come to the conclusion I am no longer capable of managing my own schedule, my own limited semi-retirement old man elderly schedule. I cannot manage it any longer. I will get to it later. But I could talk about me all day long. But we are in the presence of greatness because this is the first time this gentleman has been on my show, and I'm excited about it because it's Super Bowl week, and we thought it would be a perfect time. We wanted to have uh, Santana on the show for a long time, but this is a great excuse because it is the uh, the big week, and uh, you know, based on his career, I I want to maybe. Uh, talk to Santana Moss and bitch about NFL officiating because you know there there I were times time, that you man. did it. That, see? <laughs> it's never been worse. Santana Santana Moss, legendary Washington Redskin, legendary NFL player. Uh, it is a delight to have you on the Mike O'Mara show. It's the first time we've gotten a chance to meet, much less what are you, what are you playing there? Rob? This is his theme song. Oh man, for his podcast. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you got in late last night, yeah, right? Yeah, late last night, man. Flew in from Miami. Actually, you know, you know, I, I, went, I went home for the weekend, and I normally come in, you know, a, a little earlier in the week, but I wanted to see the kids, so I stayed a little longer. So for uh, the, the rest of the audience here, where is home? Where, where home do you, is Miami. You know? Well, home is Miami, but, you know, now I'm a Washingtonian, but home would always be Miami. You know, I live here. My family stays back in Went Florida. to the University of Miami. So, yeah. uh, and uh, did, was home Miami before uh, the, the University of Miami? Yes, I'm born and raised. Hurricane? Born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um, uh, grew up in Carroll City, you know, and played for Carroll City Senior High and, right. you know, moved on to Miami and got drafted to the Jets. You a giant, but um, I got, got drafted to the Jets in 01 and right. uh, Washington became home in 05 and I kind of couldn't peel myself away from here. So I go back there's and no, well, forth. No, I mean, you play you play for the Redskins. There's nothing, um, you know, being transplanted planted from uh, New England and coming down for most of my radio career in mm-hmm. D.C., there's nothing. I, I never saw anything like it. Yeah. And uh, you know, in the last year or two, maybe there's been a little erosion with it. But you know, I came uh, the ni- mid 1980s through uh, the 2000s. With being a Redskin is a different. It's a different kind of sports celebrity in this market because it's crazy. you're. And if you're as successful Redskin as you were, it's 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 nuts. It's it doesn't mean, and championships are, are are very important to certain cities for the way a team is perceived. Mm-hmm. It was you know week to week in this city, right? Yes. I mean, yes. th- this city, the win from the previous Sunday would be. I, I've never I've never seen anything like it. And from a player's perspective, that had to be. Uh, gratifying, but also, I mean, you you guys couldn't go anywhere. I remember it. It's, I kid you it's, not. It's amazing. I, I wish I would have brought a championship here because the love I get for just going out there yep. and, and playing my heart out. You know, it, they 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 show me so much gratitude for that. To where I I still feel like I'm I've cheated them. You know, I feel like man, right. I wish I could have gave you more, but. Uh, I love this city, man. That's why I can't, you know, you know, uh, fan to see myself somewhere else because it's just so much love here, so much going on, and the the door is always wide open for you to do more because of what you've showed and displayed to between right. those white lines. So um, I can't appreciate them, you know, any more than what they've shown me. That's why you get on a plane uh, from sunny Miami and fly into a polar vortex. No That's doubt, why you no do doubt. that. <laughs> was the weather down different down there? It was a little chilly, though. Okay. It was a little chilly. Yeah. It was a little it chilly. For, for us, for us down here, and I'm on the other side, I'm mm-hmm. on, in Fort Myers. Okay. Uh, for us, it's, uh, you know, yeah. it, it, I can't bitch about it on this show because if I come in and go, oh, my goodness, yeah. it's 60 <laughs> degrees outside. I was like that on my know? bike down there. It was 50, 57 one morning, and I jumped on the bike, and I put a hoodie on. I was like, it's chilly, but I'm like and I got here I'm crying all last night yeah. like I'm freezing yeah. you know so yeah, yeah. it was yeah. exciting and, and I found out today my car thermometer has a negative on it <laughs> Really? Yeah, Crazy. minus one just when so I got you, in the you car actually, today. You actually saw nine, minus one yeah. down here. And just imagine, um, I, I have a lot of friends from Chicago down here. Oh, and boy. those guys were, that's all they were talking about because uh, minus 56, 57 with this uh, polar you vortex. You see what the new hashtag is, is for them? What's that? 
Hashtag Chiberia. <laughs> That's reason. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, for sharing that. So, um, you, you know, being uh, I, I didn't want to I was going to introduce you when I had you on the show. I was going to introduce you saying and now here's a guy that doesn't know who I am, but has managed to piss me off many, <laughs> many, many times in my life. Because when you are a uh, a Giants fan, and Re- and Redskins fans will know this, that Santana uh, had an amazing career, but you were your big game credentials were you know when you would and when you talk about i'm sorry i didn't bring a championship that makes mm-hmm. sense to me because the the teams that you uh, you know you really got up for these the highlight reel is so much dallas so much new york giants yeah. <laughs> and i watched the giants and it just like oh i hate that guy <laughs> <laughs> you know the the long suffering but uh but it's great to have you on and now you're in the world of uh, of podcasting yeah. And, uh, you know, my experience with Podcast Village up there is this little screen you're looking heaven. at. So I yeah. don't get up it's there very often. Everybody heaven. says everybody says you're having a great time uh, doing the podcast. Tell me uh, tell me about that, that enterprise, because you're I'm in the world. I'm loving it, man. Of, uh, Honestly, uh, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that after football, my after football life would be, you know, being a part of the media, you know, uh, having my own podcast, uh, being, a, uh, you know, an analyst talking football, especially Redskins football. Right. Trust me, I'm I'm way out of you know um, what I thought would have been my norm. You know, I'm almost like a, a, a fish out of water almost. But after the last what three years, now I'm finding myself to really like enjoy what I'm doing. So um, now I want to do more. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys when people call and say, "Hey, I want you to do this," I don't ask where, how, what time I do it because it's reps for me, and I, I find you know love of just talking about something that you know that I that I feel that is something dear to me. So uh, the podcast man world is it's like you know I had to thank the people that got me involved. You know, Oscar was one of those guys. You know, Chad Dukes. You know, those guys told me, Tanner, if you want to be in this world, you know, I was doing a uh, Chad Duke show with him for the last few years. Right. And he said, you know. You know, he took my job. Oh, he took your job. Yeah, he took my job. That's right. That's right. It wasn't your job. You got to let that go. Pardon me. What do you mean it wasn't my job? You worked on that show. What the F do you mean it wasn't my job? It was my goddamn job. It was my job. Look at it. Look at it this way. What are you jumping in for? I didn't know I started something up here. No, no, no. This is the way we need to look at it. He might have taken you out of radio, but he put Santana into radio, so he's really just at a level hey. playing field right now. No, I'm happy yeah. for Santana. I'm happy for Santana. <laughs> Mike, and, don't and let I'm me know I brought up something way, that was going to be... Uh, <laughs> Chad, Chad and I, Santana, you'll find even in a brief time, uh, since we just met each other, I have a lot of issues. Um, uh, you know, for, for a man of my age, when I should be mellowing, I'm, I'm kind of doing the opposite. But but that's okay. Chad and I are friends. And, okay. and Oscar, who I've worked with for a decade now, uh, you know, is on that that show that they okay, do. I feel just, a little better Chad now. And I, Chad and I are a little different. No, Chad's Chad and I are a little show. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chad and I, you know, have a little, but but Chad and I are friends, and Chad okay. has been very respectful to me. But you know, Oscar, we just can't get away from the facts. The facts. <laughs> oh, the, the fake uh, news of the. Uh, it's not fake news. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and with Chad, Chad's been working, man. When Chad started wearing the Make America Great Again hats, you know, that that was another. He knew that worked me. And that, I think I'm responsible for that because Chad started wearing those hats initially, not because he was serious about Cheeto Dip the President. What he was doing, he was wearing those hats just to piss me off. Oh. And then look what happened. And look what happened. <laughs> let me, let me, am, let me ask you. You know, Santana, I apologize. <laughs> don't no, don't apologize to me, man. Keep I'm going. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not, enjoying it right it's, now. It's I'm weird because, myself. you know, Santana, Santana really brought a lot of positive energy in, and then the first thing you say is that you hated him as a player. You need a balance. And now you're you need a little balance. You know, it, it, no, it's, it's, it's always I, better to balance everything out. You know, so I'm the I balance am, part of it at this point. <laughs> arguably, would you two agree? Rob, I'm talking to Robin Oscar. Yes, you agree? Yes, yes. I am the biggest football fan in this room right you now. Are, you yeah. are. You are. Right, well, yes. except yes. for we maybe Santana. Santana. I follow. I, well, he, he's not a fan, Rob. He's a player, so you can't be a fan. You can be a fan, but when you're a player, stop it. Okay. I'm saying that I'm. I'm <laughs> saying that I'm a. I'm a big, I'm right, a big a player, and I was on the receiving end. And no, I mean, I am glad to meet Santana Moss. Okay. But as a New York Giants fan who lived and died with the Giants, screw you. And him. by the way, <laughs> if you know, if you know, if you know about Giants fans, <laughs> Giants fans can can uh, not only hate other players, they can hate the players they have, including yeah. one who wins Super Bowls for right. You, this like is true. Eli Manning. Mm. You know, mm. Mike. Mike. <laughs> what, it's what? important I'm for you sorry. to highlight while you while you. While you're a Giants fan, you have some really legendary uh, interactions with Redskin greats. One is Joe Theismann, and the yes. other is, is, is Rigo. So oh, of course. John Reagan, Santana yeah. might not know this. 
in two different ways. Yes, though, yes. Because please. with with John Riggins, it was uh, it was a <laughs> different kind of socializing. That you know, back I'm old, Santana. I I mean, I'm 59. I'm going to be 60 this year. So I go back a long. Hey man, salute to you. <laughs> My dad's 63, so that's you and him could have had a beer or two together. Hey, you guys could have been in the true. same high school class. <laughs> that's, that, that's, you know what? I, John John Riggins, it was a, sh- a short period of time, but John Riggins and I would uh, went out on a couple of it. We had the same agent back in the day. My first okay. real radio agent was uh, came to me because it was I was told, well, this is John Riggins' agent. Well, this has got to be great. And his name was Doug Walsh, and he introduced us. And after that, we went out a few times. So my experience with Rigo would be, you know, going out on the town, as you know, Riggins had kind of a reputation for going yeah, out on the town. Yeah, yeah. It was well deserved, and you know, and then at like three, four o'clock in the morning, you know, he'd be looking at me, going, "Mitchell, oh, man, you don't get in the Hall of Fame <laughs> with that." <laughs> then he'd go face first into his uh. exit. But but that's another story. Theismann, I played a little golf with Joe Theismann, and Joe Theismann. This is Joe Theismann's quote to me one time. I said, "I see him, uh, you know, getting ready, looking like Joe." I said, "Joe, how you doing, Mike? If I could die and come back as me." I would. Oh, that's a quote. God. That's a quote. So that's that's the the background that I have. So I mean, and oh, your, your second wedding. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He came to yeah. my second yeah. wedding. Yeah. Came my to your second, second wedding. He wedding came in number dur- two. Came in during. He came in late. Yeah. Well, yeah. not just late. He came in during the toast. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. You know, we've got a legend here. Let me. Wow. All right. Enough about me. Uh, uh, let me give you some statistics. <laughs> Seven hundred thirty-two receptions. Ten thousand two hundred thirty-eight receiving yards. Mm. You know. I mean, when you have over 10,000, I think you just say over 10,000. That's it. Uh, 66 receiving touchdowns. Uh, These statistics are amazing. Here's the best one I love. 1,398 punt return yards, including some spectacular punt returns and uh, three uh, for TDs, which is just, uh, it's just amazing. I mean, your career, I always, when I watch you as a fan, and I just want, I'll get the football crap out of the way, Mm -hmm. and then we can just talk and I'll talk about my tragic personal life. But I want to say this to you, (laughs) that I I always watched you as a player, and I'm sure you've gotten this before, and I don't, because I haven't heard a lot of interviews with you. So this, if you've heard this stuff before, Bear with me, but your your build as a wide receiver yeah. was always a little different to me. You know, way you think of, way you think of To, uh, you know, you think of uh, Randy Moss. You think you were built kind of like a linebacker, but a tall linebacker. You know what I mean? You were you were stocky. stocky. You'd catch yeah. the ball, and uh, yeah, that was that was unusual when even when you came into the league, right? Yeah, I mean, all my life I heard that um, my structure wasn't going to be of a receiver. You know. I remember in Little League, they told me, you'll be a, a scat back. You know, we put you in the right. backfield every now and then. Right. I told them no way because I didn't like to depend on the folks in front of me to block for me and me take on those hits. And I started off my career of football. I was a, a cornerback slash safety and a receiver. So I was a defensive guy that, that you know, I, was a, I had a knack for the ball. So at corner, you throw it my way, I'm reading the quarterback, I'm going the other way with it. And right. Got to the point that was it bored me at times because at time I didn't get you know play you know or get any activity on my side. I said, hey, you know what? I'm a I'm gonna be a full time receiver once I hit high school, and um, I saw guys, my friends, you name it, folks were you know of my structure or smaller playing in the backfield. They like, well, you need to be back here at ten. And I'm like, no, I'm an outside guy because I just hate it depending on folks blocking for me. So. Uh, for some odd reason, man, I became that receiver that they told me I couldn't be, and the rest is history, you know? Yeah, and with well, the speed helped, I think. I speed mean, that, is everything, that, yeah. Speed that kills, I said bit. myself. <laughs> <laughs> speed kills. You can be built any way you want when, yeah. you, uh, when you're as fast. It was great. It's, it was fun to watch. Uh, even uh, as, as a fan of another team, it was fun to watch you, uh, you play, and uh, it's just a, it's been an interesting time for the uh, Washington Redskins. You were here for a, uh, for, for a good chunk of it. Uh, kind of a controversial topic in Washington, but uh, you know, with ownership and with uh, the coaching changes, uh, year after year after year, well, you 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 live it more than I do. Let me yeah. ask you this: as far as in this, I'll get this out of the way for all our Washington Redskins fans that listen to this show. Uh, where do you think the fan base is mm. right now with the Redskins? I, I get from afar down here in Florida when I'm mm-hmm. watching it because I still pay attention. I get the impression. That the uh, the the fan base in Washington is is at a pretty delicate frustration point right now. They're hurting right now. They're hurting as a fan base. I think I never seen them at the state that they're at right now. Uh, I talk to a lot of folks, you know, uh, periodically when I'm doing different appearances or I'm just you know doing a norm of going to a movie or just you know going out to dinner. 
And the fans come up and they're at a state that I've never seen them at. Because when yep. I got here in 05, even with not having that many good seasons at that point, you know, these guys were showing up, 80-plus thousand and, and, and stack, you know, packing the house. And, I, you know, I found the love of just showing up on Sundays and saying, like, man, one thing I can, you know, count on is these guys cheering us on. Right. And now you can you can you can you can cross your fingers and hope you get thirty thousand in that stadium. And I remember the first game this year I went to, oh, uh, I knew I was going to only be there for a half. I sat there and I'm like, okay, I guess the weather is you know is the reason why these folks isn't showing up. Or <laughs> uh, you know right. so probably by halftime right. people will be rolling yeah. in, or maybe they out there getting a couple of hot dogs or you know you know getting thirty some beers. beers, you know whatever. You know I thought it was just like odd to see. I didn't even hear a cheer for some of the guys that was being introduced, you know, before the game. And that I found that odd. So seeing that game one, you know, uh, I guess they played the Colts first home game this year, mm-hmm. this past season. And then come then showing up every other home game and seeing the same atmosphere or even less. It just makes you shake your head and then scratch your head at the same time and wonder why. And then the, the way the se- season went on and the thing, different things that, you know, uh, happened throughout the season. You know, we had a state that we need to correct a lot. You know, yeah. yeah, I feel like the organization itself need to correct a lot. A lot of changes need to be uh, made, but at the same time, we need to find a way that we can connect more with our fans and hear them out. You know, you need to hear them out and see what's the problems or some of the things that is causing these guys not to show up. And you have to cater to them because I think if you if you can't cater to the fans, then you don't give yourself or give your team a chance to really have that atmosphere that's much needed, a home field advantage. I was glad to hear you say that because I agree with everything you said. And, and you're in a situation now, and this is, you know, for those of you around the country, this is Redskins talk, but, uh, you know, we're, the show originates from D.C. Um, and I just wanted to cover this because I think this is a fan base that for years and years and years, decades, this fan base um, were they were uh, I don't want to say taken advantage of that's too strong but they, but it was assumed by ownership that this fan base you know taken for granted and in, when you have a uh, an inability to bring home uh, championships that that wears that wears and when you throw in the fact that you know you assume that they're going to tolerate the highest prices in the NFL mm-hmm. for certain things you know and they assume that. And you look at smaller markets around the, the NFL and other sports, and there's a lot of stuff they do to cater to the fans. NHL's yeah. a good example of that, mm-hmm. where they, you know, they have these cities that do stuff for, for fans. I think they've got to get to that, and uh, somebody's got to get Mr. Uh, Snyder, Danny Boy, into a, into a room and say, hey, you know, it's a, he's probably aware of that. He's not an idiot. I mean, he knows what's going on. But it's, it's frustrating, and, uh, and I, I was curious your take on it, and I'd love to see him change it. I'd love to see him turn yeah, you around. You want to see but, it. Yeah, and ultimately Santana uh, championship and what happens on the field, you know, all bets are off with that. Uh, we'll, we'll come back. I want to talk to you about uh, NFL refereeing. Oh boy, <laughs> because because you know uh, how yeah. I feel about these refs. The, well, the playoffs are, are just it's gotten out of hand. We'll uh, we'll talk about and then I've got a Florida thing where I want to share with you my screw up for the weekend. That's totally Florida centric. And for those of you living in the polar vortex, I'm sorry it's going to piss you off. But it's my world, and I screwed up. We'll be right back with Santana Moss, and this is the Michael Mara Show. Start the show, Rob Spiewak. It's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. John, do you have the car keys? Do I have the car keys? No, no. But according to the sign-out sheet... I was the last person to use the car. Well, that's not very helpful, John. You're the only one using this sign-out sheet. Well, that's not true. Stevie's got her name on the sheet. Wait a minute. Why is Stevie's name on the sheet? She's got her own car. David, do you know where the car keys are? Yeah, I have them. Oh, well, then why isn't your name on the sign-out sheet? Because you're the only one using that sign-out sheet. David, I need the car keys. Your father's driving me to Thornbridge. I'm driving you to Thornbridge? To the municipalities conference, yes. I thought Roland offered to drive you. Oh, he did, but no thanks. I can't take four hours in a truck with Roland and Leonard Skinner. Okay, Alexis and I need the car. We're running some errands for the store today. Um, since when? Uh, since I need your help for a pickup, and Mom clearly already has a lift, and I'm pretty sure parents are supposed to put their children before themselves. Oh, really? No, if airplane safety videos have taught me anything, David, it's that a mother puts her own mask on first. Ah, see? And that's precisely why we have the sign-out sheet for this kind of dispute. Okay, fine. 
Now my name is on the list and there is a sheep farm that's expecting us in 20 minutes for a pickup of some wool throws. No, 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 no. Your mother already expressed a verbal intention to use the car. Okay, we're gonna have the car back in a few hours. Okay, well, I might need it for a few hours after that, though. Fine, we'll just keep it for the day. John? You people are abusing the system. It's not a difficult system. Marva, look at this. Under purpose of trip, he writes, driving. <laughs> It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his settee, here's Mike. Live from the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., this is the Mike O'Mara Show. The Mike O'Mara Show, or TMOS to our friends, is a worldwide podcast and radio show with a family of listeners who are unrivaled in their love and support for the program. If you're a first-timer, sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained. For our longtime friends, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for spreading the word every day about TMOS. From Sparks, Maryland, to Greenberg, Indiana, from West Allis, Wisconsin, to Cool, California, cool. From, from Point Pleasant, New Jersey, to Adelaide, South Australia, the Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by Untuck It. Here's a tip. No guy looks good in a long, bulky dress shirt when it's untucked. You might think it looks casual, but it actually ends up looking sloppy. That's because they were never meant to be worn that way. Untuck It makes shirts specifically designed to be worn untucked. I love my Untuck It shirts. Not too long, not too short. For that clean, casual look you can wear at the office with more than one, uh, more than 50 fit combinations. Untuck It shirts look great on tall, short, slim, and athletic guys of all ages. Go to UntuckIt.com or visit one of Untuck It's 50 stores across the United States and Canada. Untuck It even offers free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. Use promo code TMOS for 20% off your first purchase. So, if you want the perfect fitting shirt, regardless of your shape and size, try the original Untuck shirt. And uh, remember, use the promo code TMOS for 20% off your first purchase at Untuck It. Welcome, welcome. We're here with the uh, legendary NFL receiver Santana Moss, who is a host of his own podcast now. And uh, you also have a charity foundation, 89 Ways to Give. For those of you that don't, why is it 89? That was his number! <laughs> now, come on, people! <laughs> <laughs> 89 Ways to Give can be found at 89waystogive.com, and Santana Moss uh, joins us right now. You're from Miami. Uh, you you know that down here in South Florida, we're very blessed with wonderful weather, Great and, weather. Uh, and for outdoor activities, and so uh, you like like going out and traveling, and uh, you can, uh, the, the thing I like about Florida is uh, you can get to different parts of the state where stuff's going on. And you can do so, you know, very easily. I can actually drive to Key West, Florida in about five hours and 20 minutes, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, pretty cool to be in that part of the world from my part of Florida. And so uh, I, uh, I, I was driving down this week and I was going to leave after the show tomorrow and drive down to Key West where my sister's staying down there and hang out, drink a little rum, have some fun, and life was going to be good. And, uh, and I also play, as the guys know, a lot of golf down here. And so uh, we, we got a rental car because we didn't want to put the mileage on the car that we have down mm -hmm. here. Yeah, you wouldn't understand these things. It's, it's kind of Honestly. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I lease and the mileage. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't want to digress. You got a cap. Uh, you got a cap on the miles. You got a cap. Uh, you got, uh, my sister had an uh, extra bedroom. We're going to stay down there. No hotel. It's going to be fine. Now, I also, as the guys know, play a ton of golf down here. I, it's one of my I, – I like my – I love my family. Uh I love my show, and I love golf in that order. That's mm -hmm. kind of it's become more than just a hobby. I, it's what I do. I, I love being out there. Now there is a tournament they have, uh, and I'm talking to Santana because I don't care about the other guys right now. There's a tournament they have down here <laughs> called the Buddy Buddy Tournament. All right, the Buddy Buddy Tournament is a a don't will you stop stop smirking at me, Rob? <laughs> please, for I, God's sake. Quite the name. This is the one that was founded by Buddy Ebsen and Buddy Ryan, right? It's no, it's Buddy Buddy where. And it's the when I moved down here, a guy said, "Hey, are you new to the place?" I said, "Yeah, well, I, I'd like you. Why don't you play in the buddy buddy with me?" And I've never said I wouldn't because it was the first guy that ever invited me to anything. Friend, and I thought friendship, it'd friendship. be really cool. Yeah. Yes. So the buddy buddy takes place in February, and you kind of pick. Uh, you, you have teams where you have to play these other two guys, and then if you win, you go on, and if you win, you go on, and you win, you go on. It's like the NFL playoffs. 
exactly like the NFL playoffs. <laughs> same level of <laughs> athletic so. prowess. Same same level of athletic ability. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I. Uh, this is embarrassing. This is. Why is it embarrassing? I'm telling what happened. This is on my um, mind, uh, and I have to bet. Right, and if uh, I don't I'm bet, I can't do it. Man, to carry so on, I've got please. the tournament works where you have the whole month basically of February to pick the the pick a mutually agreed upon time where you play an 18 hole golf match against the team that you're scheduled to play against. That's it. And so I said, okay, that's great. I'll do it in February. I'm going away in a week, and I, I'm going to go away for the weekend. But I didn't think it's February. There are plenty of days I'll be able to do this. How, and, well, how competitive is the buddy-buddy tournament? Just so we really lay down. Yeah, like a what, scale of yes. 1 to 10. Do you have any music that might work with that? Sure. Possibly. Mm-hmm. No, the guy that I play with, I don't. Uh, the, the knock on him, I, I don't think he necessarily gives a shit. Oh, he doesn't to be care. Honest he doesn't care. But, no, but I do. Does everyone I else like, care? Compet- a lot of guys care. A lot of guys care. What do you- so you get on the green. What is this music? Is this NFL music? You're so the buddy, buddy, ter- uh, uh, this tournament is more like one of those you play and I drink tournaments, or <laughs> not both, that casual. <laughs> okay, not that casual. He's I just, just want to like, know. I just want because I let me know, just put it this way. I, I will he, sign. I, I will sign up. You know, and be a part of it because you know I'll be the drinking that buddy. I was gonna say which side. <laughs> yeah, right. The drinking buddy. Do you, do, you, do you play? Do you play golf? Do you play I golf? you know. Occasionally, yes, but I don't play as much. I do more of the drinking part. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, socializing and drinking. Right. You know. Well, you know what? You may be talking to a champion right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, if you want to talk about an area where I've excelled most of my adult life, anyway. So, so I the I'm playing yesterday, and one of my guys from Boston, uh, my buddy Gino, and Gino says, uh, "So you been up for the big tournament this weekend, there, Mike?" <laughs> And I and I said, what tournament? He said, the buddy buddy. I said, no, buddy buddy. Uh, what are they doing? There's a shotgun start that uh, they're all going to be out there, you know. And I said, no, no, it's uh, you play for the whole month. No, no, they got everybody. The first round, oh. everybody's there together. And I realized at that moment that oh god, I've I've screwed up. I mm. booked mm. this trip. My wife is uh, you know uh, in mourning because she lost her dog, and uh, we've got the kid yeah. who's going to be with uh, with the babysitter this weekend, and everything is set. And I screwed up. The long and short of it, I messed the whole thing up. And I and people are going to go, you know, people that are living in fifty mile an hour below zero wind chill are going, oh poor Mike, poor Mike. No, <laughs> you didn't. Ha- you didn't have to endure the morning of. I see you're right. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thought it'd be good for us to get away. Oh you know, my god. Oh no. Oh man. You should, you should have like some uh, some quick like stats crap. uh Santana Moss is that Mike is on his third marriage. You know, uh, that's M- not Mike's, nice. Uh, well, that's no, not kind. But as a that's sports not, guy, I'm sure that he, he yeah. appreciates yeah. statistics. This is just this is just hard data, right? right? These are the hard numbers they don't like. Are you married Santana? Yes. Are uh, are you uh, do you have kids? Yes, I have kids. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just dead. I'm dead. Oh, boy, he kind of had that intimidating look. But okay, I won't ask any more questions about that. <laughs> all I know is that you're not about to get buddy buddy with him. It's not going to happen know. anytime soon. I just don't want to hear no sad him. stories, Mike. Because I don't want to. No, no. I, don't wanna go no I, I believe in the institution of marriage. I'm all for it. That's gotcha. why I've done it three times. I, yeah. I believe it's, in it. This is I tell it. you one time is 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 in or out. You know, enough. Yeah. It's enough. Sometimes yeah. one is yeah. too many. Yeah. Well, no. In, in this particular case, I think I have found my my. Uh, should be a pro mate. hitter now. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, third I, I, well, time, th- third, yeah. third yeah. time is a charm. There's. Uh, let me just yeah. say this uh, financially, from a financial <laughs> standpoint, and you are in a different zip code than yeah. I am. But let me tell you this: that financially, what I've gone through with two mar- marriages prior to this one uh, is probably the reason why I'm renting a car to keep the mileage down on the one that I lease. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> that would. Let's just say if I stayed married to the first one. Probably wouldn't even be thinking about that right now. <laughs> Makes sense. But I do. But that's it. So uh, anyway, I screwed up. And the, the the gist of the story here is that I just got to, as Oscar will tell you, I got to be more mindful of mm. scheduling and details. And I, I kind of... Uh, I kind of throw that by you, the wayside. You, you disappointed your or your wife, who's 20 years, it's all on 20 years younger than me. I disappointed oh, my wife. I disappointed my sister. By the Older way... Older sister. By the way, and my sister informed me, which I also forgot because I'm a dumbass, that the guy that was going to be down there was the crew coach that got me to go to Marist College to row from Marist College. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and he was going to, this is the guy literally that got me into college. Wow. And so he was going to be down there. You basically um, screwed all these people over for the buddy-buddy tournament. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Let me, 
<laughs> well, I, yes. Uh, come on, Mike. Fit right in. Right. <laughs> right. So I heard you were kind of a natural in the podcasting business. Now that's been a, a, yeah. Oh, um, Mike. There's listen. I haven't been invited to anything down here with these Midwestern Indiana Iowa people that uh, where I am not. I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't fit in. I don't, but I love golf. That's the only area I fit in. This is the only the you, they take this seriously, sure, yeah. and, and 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 they take it seriously because this is what they do. If I did that, I wouldn't be just screwing uh, my partner. I'd be screwing the other two guys. They wouldn't be able to reschedule it, and we'd have to bow out. And the other guys would be without opponents. I'd, I'd mess up the whole format mm. of the turn. I, there was no the decision to screw the family. As opposed to my buddy buddy partners, uh, it was not a. I didn't. It didn't take me. So any you're time. you're okay. I knew what I had to do in the buddy buddy golf environment. How did your sister take the news? Kathy doesn't let her. Uh, she's been disappointed she, by him so many times. She, it's probably she, like, she, oh yeah, far for the course. What do you wow. mean she's been disappointed? I mean, I'm sorry. I meant time. that was the inner monologue. She <laughs> probably was bummed out. But I would she, think you know, so. She yeah. didn't make a big deal about mm-hmm. it. Well, you always well, can I mean, go back down there. You always can say, you know what? After the buddy buddy tournament, I'll see you guys. So it's well, they're going to head back to Boston. So yeah. So uh, the tournament, well, Boston's the tournament nice is too. like once in a lifetime or twice in a lifetime, and <laughs> or every year, <laughs> or every year. No, Santana, and, all right. are you joining buddy, in now? No, you know it's <laughs> hey, I'm not. just trying to be. You know it's you know, not. I'm trying to find I, know, an equal I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's not helping. <laughs> uh, but uh, all right, we have to take another commercial break. But that's. Uh, I just had to get that out. You, are you sending Carla anyways, just so she can go maybe with her mom? Carla, right now, Carla is is in the process of figuring out what she wants to do. And and I told her that I would be available to her through tomorrow night. Uh, but Saturday, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not invited. Sure. So it's buddy, golf, buddy tournament. your family, then the show. That's a new power ranking. No, it's not. It just happens to be for this week. And we have to take a commercial. It's for this week. <laughs> We're running late already. <laughs> I want to talk about, you know, I promised it. I do want to talk about, hey, for non-sports people, I'm going to talk about NFL officiating. And how it's ruining people's lives. When we come <laughs> back right here on the Michael Mary. <laughs> In these divisive times, it's hard to find common ground. It's difficult to concur, which is why there is such value to calm, collected political discourse. This is why we need political persuasions. Michael Mara. You don't fing understand that we're in a world of shit right now. Chris Freight. Yeah, I'm not going to let it happen. Line of fonts, it's a cool, considerate man. You want to yell? I'll fing yell, asshole. Yo, because let's the f-ing yell. Deal. And never clouding their judgment with the fog of emotion. You know why you can't? Because I just there's did. nobody. Why there's don't you no- fing let me talk? O'Mara. You might you pretend do. that you're objective, but you're not it, really objective. Freight. I let you run on and blah, blah, blah. I don't interrupt your red face rants, and then I try to say three words and blah, blah, blah. talk the issues of today. Are you going to let me finish a a sentence today? Find it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Political persuasions, quietly changing the world. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Liquid IV. The cold and flu season is officially here. Boo! Did you know that uh, proper hydration is one of the most important factors in uh, flu and cold prevention and recovery? Liquid IV is a healthy alternative to traditional sugary sports drinks. And unlike Pedialyte or Gatorade, it has no artificial flavors or preservatives. When mixed with 16 ounces of water, it actually helps your body absorb more of the water and nutrients you drink directly into your bloodstream. I love this stuff. It's non-GMO, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. And it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. Liquid IV is the fastest growing hydration brand. You can find it everywhere, even Costco. You can find Liquid IV at all Costco's nationwide. I love Liquid IV, and I know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 20% off at liquidiv.com when you use your code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order on the Liquid IV website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter the promo code TMOS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code TMOS. Don't wait. Get hydrated today. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Play the clip, Rob Spiewak. Come on. Here we go. You gave me a thumbs up. There's a wide out to the right. Larry Michael, play by play. Watch the Redskins. We need to have something good to happen right now. Cooley in motion. 
Brunel, quick screen out to the left side. Santana Moss has it. Breaks through 30, 35, 40. He's sideline. He's going to go. He's going to go. 40, 35, 30, 20. He's going all the way. Touchdown. The second touchdown of the game for Santana Moss. 79 yards on the play. A screen. That's what he's <laughs> Thanks, been Sonny. working for. Him. A screen. Oh, boy, he is that is a, I, play that clip, I play that clip for one reason. Uh, to demonstrate the uh, incredible ability of our guest Santana Moss, but also to demonstrate what true, you know, wonderful play-by-play is. You know, just, <laughs> Mike, come no, on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, it's just that should be a screen out to Santana Moss. He's got it. He could go all the way. Instead, 30, 20, 10. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love you, Larry, but give me a break. Hi. Welcome back. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not well today. Santana Moss. Thank you for well, at least, uh, at least Sonny see, tipped it. At yeah. least I'm glad I didn't have to listen. I, I was out there, you know, strutting yes. my stuff, so. doing the yeah. work. <laughs> it just was. It was a screaming play-by-play opportunity, and it yeah. was kind of like. And then Sonny, you know, with the incredible color commentary, scream. <laughs> well, and then uh, Sonny anyway, could have dropped in so. his catchphrase, which is hot dog, <laughs> hot dog, <laughs> hot dog. Give me a hot dog. God bless Sonny. Uh, we're here with. Oh man! With you guys off the chain. It's too early for this, Mike. It's too early. For this. I know. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming in early. We appreciate it, Santana. I got to ask you about uh, the state of the officiating in the NFL. You got some, uh, along with your career highlights. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the particular moments uh, jumps to mind. You were. Uh, Oh, God, I hope I get this right. It's RG3. Uh, touchdown gets called back. Said he didn't have control of the ball. You get ejected arguing with uh, officiating. Yeah. I think officiating, uh, I said to the guys a couple of weeks ago after the uh, championship games, I came in here and I said, it, I feel as a fan when I'm watching the games now, it gets to a point where it, it's not who's going to win the game. It's going to who's going to catch the the break by right. uh, the officials with the reviews. And no Look, I understand that the reviews are important. They probably improve the calls in the game. But it's getting to be, especially late in the game, it seems like constant review, review, and what's it going to be, and what, and, and then when you get a, uh, you know, with all the technology available, and you get a uh, a call uh, like the Saints Rams game with the obvious pass interference. That's uh, what. What's your opinion of the state of uh, officiating in the NFL right now? My my opinion has always been the same. Uh, one of the things I've learned from just from being a player, you can't allow the fans. I mean, you can't allow the the, uh, the officials to be you know, uh, to have the last deciding factor of the game. I think, you know, many times um, as a Redskin, and even as a Jet, I remember my years at the Jet, we sat there fussing and fighting with the the officials for calls. But one of the things I've learned through the 14-year, you know, career of mine, you can't allow them to be the ones that say, okay, we're going to either decide whether you have a chance to win the game or lose the game. Because if you have, if you find yourself in that situation, like we saw over there in New Orleans, you're going to find yourself on the opposite side and it's not going to be so pleasant. Um, the All right, so you say your point, let me see if I get your point. You're saying basically, win, you know, you're up by two touchdowns, that's irrelevant. That play doesn't matter. You just got to win the game. Doesn't handle. Matter. You, don't, you don't want it to come down don't to where it's don't want to come down to the end to right. where they're the guys to make the decision whether you have that, that, that penalty call or not. And some of the things are obvious. Like New Orleans, that, that play in New Orleans is obvious. And right. you wonder why that, you know, this guy just didn't see it. He saw it. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows he saw it. Right. You wonder why he didn't call it now. That's what yeah. that's my question. Why you didn't call it? Because it was two fouls. You know, it was a helmet to helmet and a pass interference. So you will never know. And as someone who played the game, what would it, do you have any idea look, what his motivation I, would be in not calling it? Look, I for, for years of watching sports, period, basketball to football, I always said that if you allow the officials to be, you know, uh, have their hands on the game to where they can make something say this is going to allow this team to win mm-hmm. or lose, trust me, they will make the right call or or don't make the call at all. And mm. that's what you saw. To me, that's just my opinion. And so they will influence the game, and you have to uh, you have to take them out of the game, and that means you got to win. You got to win outright. Handily, you have to go out there outright. and just handle your business. And I just feel right. like I've saw that too many times. Too many yeah. times I've been on this road watching sports or being a part of a game to where when the officials have a chance to say it's up to me to make this team go or this team, they will always ride on their their decision and they will cause you the game. And that's what we saw over there in New Orleans. Yeah, and it's frustrating uh, as from a fan standpoint because you know if you especially if you got an emotional interest in the game, 
and I don't, and it still pisses me off. So you know, I'm I'm not rooting for that any was just team, blatantly, any team you know, that was Terrible. wrong. You know, it was and, wrong. and in the in the, in the NFL, of course, these guys go back uh, during the week to being you know accountants and dentists and going back to do right. I mean, it's not it's not like in baseball. Where you got guys that uh, that's how they make their living. Yeah. That it's a, I think that's always been a factor. With they the still NFL make a pretty good living, though. I mean, they that's still a get side paid, right? job, and they're yeah. making six figures almost. You know, yeah. or probably yeah. well over six figures. So, right. I just feel like at the end of the day, uh, with these officials, they have to have something. You know, they have to be reprimanded for their actions. Also, you know, if we're going to be fined or penalized for some of the things that we do throughout our game, if you're calling our game, you have to be reprimanded. You have to be. Put in a position where you can lose a check or you can be fined for not making a call or, you know, penalized as in saying, I can't allow you to fish the next game because you're causing people their livelihoods. You know what I mean? This team has right. been, to me, dealt two tough blows from the previous year of that miracle in Minnesota to now having a shoot. I mean, they, they could have literally walked into the Super Bowl. Right. If that play was called right, you know, handle, right. Cl- you know, um, um, uh, clock situations, they was going to handle that well, run the clock out, kick a field goal or score. And now you don't give the Rams a chance to come down and score or win the game. And I just feel like it was up to the officials and they made the they made the right call that they felt that should have been called. By not you know, it's call. it's interesting. Uh, an article, I think it was in the Boston Globe that I was reading this morning about uh New England and what 18 years nine trips to the mm. uh, to the Super Bowl something like that some ridiculous statistic like that and there's an article and this speaks to the way fans react uh and being from that part of the country where I went north for my baseball with the Red Sox as a fan and south uh for with the Giants because I was in the central part of the state of Connecticut and I I was reading the article that uh it, the gist of it was not as special anymore that you don't have, uh, you know, where Philly last year, the police were greasing up the uh, light poles so people wouldn't scale them uh, <laughs> if, if they won the, you know, the championship. Where in Boston now, uh, it's kind of like, eh, whatever, that's it. You know, it's, it's weird the way fans react. And uh, this speaks to you. How much, you know, you, you mentioned it right at the beginning. It's the first thing you said about a championship. Uh, when you look back, you can't control. It is a team sport. Yeah. You got the coaching, you got ownership. You know, you played at a high level everywhere you were. How much do, does that gnaw at you at all when you when you're with two particular teams where it just doesn't happen to happen? And you know, so many players in the league yeah. have had amazing careers and never gotten that. Well, I, it's a terrible question to ask you, but I got to ask you because I wonder how you feel about not ever getting the ring in the NFL. Yeah, it's kind of odd because in high school I was a champion. Um, in college, I was kind of, um, you know, I could say that the BCS. All American. No, I was all American, but the BCS bull, the BCS bull crap kind of, kind of forced us out of the championship game, but we right. still actually played for a championship. We was able to still play in the Sugar Bowl and then Florida State would have handled Oklahoma, we'd have been co-champ. So to me, I would have been a champion, but it wasn't up in, you know, it wasn't in our hands. Uh, in the pros, I just knew. Rather, it was a 14-year career. Somehow, somewhere, I was going to get there. I didn't even see the game before the championship game. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. It, it was just I've, I've heard other guys like you know um, uh, Brandon Marshall, who hasn't been in the playoff ever in his career. So right, I just found it odd to to have the career that I had and not you know play for a championship because I feel like my play was on a championship you know caliber of you know talent and. My brother played what six years, five or six years. Here we're with Santana Moss, uh, Super Bowl week with the uh, the Patriots going in there. We're going to take a short break when we come back. More fun and more thrills on the Mike Omera Show. You're as cold as ice. This week on the Mike Omera Bonus Show. When the groundhog sees the ghost on the day of Saturday, it uh, is a shadow. Does, Make sure you say what? shadow. It's not ghost. It's shadow. S H A. I'm so sorry. I I have the trouble with the shadow. <laughs> I write that down. Shadow. Spell S- again for me, please. Spell. S- spell. Could S- spell for me, S- please. S is in Sam. S A- H. Just a minute, please. I don't speak your language. Just write down. Okay. S. H- yes. S. S. S A. H. H is in how a- or head. H. Head. S. S- 
Ed. The Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Because five hours a week just ain't enough. Always available at MikeO'MaraShow.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Brandless. Why battle crowds at the big box stores only to pay a premium price for disappointing quality? Brandless cuts out the middleman to deliver just what matters, all at simple, fair prices. Brandless offers better options for the things you care about. They sell everything, and the website is a thing of beauty. I got my knives, beautiful, yes. shiny knives, and uh, knives that my wife might take to me this weekend based on the uh, <laughs> fact that I screwed up the weekend for uh, their thing of beauty. All this stuff at Brandless, it's simple, but it's quality. It's pens, wonderful Mike. quality. I love pens. They have the you best like pens. pens. It's great. Pens. If you pen, love pen pens, snob. I'm pen a pen snob. snob. Yeah. And you know what? For all the pen connoisseurs out there. <laughs> <laughs> they do it right. Get it? All right. All right. Brandless <laughs> offers uh, better for you items at better prices. Ship directly to you. I've got pens, Mike. Did you get anything else besides the fucking pens? Yeah, of course. I got um, actually stuff. I got some great kitchen stuff. They had a salt grinder. I'd never had a salt grinder before. Rob, Rob, after the show, Mike, I kid you not. He's like, man, I should have gotten some knives as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The knives rock. They really do. They're great. I shall uh, visit the I'm knives. I'm sorry I said Rob the F like word the sharp, I see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. You're getting it. Uh, they provide millions of mil- meals a year through their partnership with uh, Feeding America, the nation's largest domestic hunger relief organization. Right now, our listeners can receive $10 off uh, their first order or first their order. It's 2019. Up the game. That's how are the, how are the pens doing? Pens are great. Uh, Typing, not so good. great. <laughs> so in the pens, you would write their first order as, as opposed to first their order. Right. That would be the pen to edit that copy before it gets to what I call final, which is when it's in my hand. Right. It's just a tip. Uh, $50. So let me say it again. Right now, our listeners can receive $10 off first their order of $50 or more and free shipping at Brandless. Go to Brandless.com and use the code TMOS to start saving on high-quality products. Don't wait a second longer. Go to Brandless.com and enter TMOS to get $10 off your first order of five, uh, $50 or more and free shipping. Start enjoying the high-quality products you deserve and do it today. All right. So did we get the video? The video at the end video's was good little, to go. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. video's good to go. Everything's uh, A-OK. Fantastic. With, uh, uh, Santana Moss. How much is the uh, Vortex going to affect the... Uh, you guys up there. I know the Midwest is getting... It kind of swings up, and you're not getting as whacked as anybody else, right? This uh, morning was our worst day. Yeah. Uh, it was and negative. It will be your worst day? or well, I mean, it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to get better from here on out. It's not going to be yeah, ridiculous be from now on, but today is well, bad. Uh, the Wisconsin Avenue right side of... Uh, which is proper as far as Northwest D.C. is concerned for us was a mess this morning, and I didn't know why. It looked like a water main broke. Yeah. yeah. Like pipe snapping left and right. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty amazing when you hear about Chicago and the Midwest when you talk about 60 in certain areas, maybe what north of 60 degrees below zero, yes. which mm-hmm. I've never I, I can't believe what that would uh, what that would be like for people, especially negative, people negative that are, 12. That are, I heard at one time negative uh, really negative 12 in D.C. No, in Chicago, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. the wind chill is like oh, the wind chill is yeah, in the 60s. That's weird. That's weird. Uh, we're here with uh, Santana Moss. All I'm hearing, and I got back to it with the Super Bowl, Santana, is that this Super Bowl, even with major markets like Los Angeles and with the fan base up in New England, not the kind of same heat that we had last year with Philadelphia and with New England. And the article in the Globe that I, before I got off on a, a thing asking you, not as much uh, sparkle with this uh, Super Bowl. You which you think? never, you don't hear that very often. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't know what you're hearing on the on the street. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, there's so many different teams in LA now that mm-hmm. that, uh, and you know, you got a team that uh, kind of uh, a city like St. Louis that kind of feels screwed with the uh, team going out to Los Angeles, and then you got uh, the Patriots, where you know the Tom Brady factor. Uh, you know, as a former player, how do you look at it? Do you uh, do you, I mean, do you detach yourself from it a little bit and just respect the athletic ability? of a guy like Brady and a coach like uh, Belichick having that success? I think it's uh, one of the things when I grew up, uh, when I was growing up, um, I loved watching Jordan and Phil do their thing for so many years. And, you know, you hear about the dynasties from different teams. I also was a big 49er fan growing up. So to see Jerry Rice have championships with Montana and then with, um, uh, I can't think of his name right now, other other quarterback, Steve uh, Steve Steve Young. Young. You know, just to see him go through with two quarterbacks and see the dynasty that they they built there. And even in in Dallas, you know, they had their little, you know, dynasty, short dynasty with the triplets and everything. To see what 
the New England Patriots have been doing to be able to see this 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 game. I call it the um, the dance. That's what I used to call it when I played the if big make dance. It, the big dance. Right. This guy's been there nine times with Tom Brady, and the reason why it's special to me to see these guys do what they do because I was a part of that team that allowed Tom Brady to be Tom Brady. You know, I was on the 2001. I, I, my I got drafted in 2001 to the New York Jets, and Mo Lewis of you know the New York Jets, the linebacker, he the one hurt Bless so to to allow Tom Brady to get in the game, and that was the that was history. The, the rest was history. Sixth That's, round draft pick. Yes. Uh, Tom, so just Tom to Brady, see what he's amazing, and it's not that. just about being a player and having your opportunity to be you know a starter. You no, know, Tom Brady took advantage of that opportunity. And him and Belichick was like a perfect marriage. You know, these guys have really built something that you would probably never see again. And to watch these guys year after year, whether they win it or not, it's just astonishing just to see these guys make it and go through the different, you know, the different different odds that they have to face, you know, week in and week out about whether they have a number one receiver or not, whether their running game is hitting on all cylinders, whether the defense is the defense of old. Because, you know, yeah, I think a couple of those Super Bowls is won defensively, you know, by itself. And then you got to think Vinatieri was a big help for some of those Super Bowls also. But now you see that they're clicking on all cylinders when it comes defensively, special teams-wise, and offensively. So it's just odd to see these guys still going. And – Nine years later, you know, Tom Brady came in, I believe, a year before me. I think he was drafted in 2000, and I was drafted in 2001. To see this guy still playing at a high level, uh, 40-plus years, and to be still considered one of the top quarterbacks in this game when it's so many other guys have, have came in and, and wowed us with their play, man, it's, you have to give these guys. That's why I say I find it odd to hear that you're saying people are not, you know, uh, it doesn't have the same – you know, um, sizzle. vibe. You know, yeah. sizzle and vibe that you you heard from last year. I think just seeing what LA has done, having all these teams go to LA. Yeah, it's kind of odd to have all these teams move to LA, but to see them in a Super Bowl that early. You know, to see the Rams two years later. You know, Sean McVay. You know, head coach last year, and now he's there. You know, I want to talk about taking the L, something that I talk about on my show. The Washington Redskins could sit there and say they took an L with letting Sean McVay leave because. To me, if he's still here, it's easy to move him ahead of, you know, who we have now. You know, and on uh, Jay Gruden just saying that, hey, I think it's time for Sean to to take over the helm and, and be that guy because to see what he's done in, in L.A., it's just uh, it, it's wowing everybody. So I have high aspirations for this game because you think back when New England saw the Rams in 2001, they saw the greatest show on turf at the time. And mm-hmm. they was able to beat those guys. Now you have uh, another high-powered offense coming in from the Rams again this year. But not only do they have a high-powered offense, their defense too. has right. been mm-hmm. the things that we've been talking about lately. And when you have Donald and Sue and then you have the cornerback play, you know, with uh, Tlaib and all those guys, it's going to be interesting to see if Tom can go out there and still find his way through all what's going on with the Rams and how – you know, to me, I feel like this game is almost riding in their favor to see if he can conquer those guys and be a champion again. Uh, and and for those of you who are with uh, Santana Moss, Redskins, great for uh, many years, and also uh, great with the New York Jets. Um, and I'm getting my uh, my Super Bowl football fill with uh, Santana. And uh, you know, for those of you who say it was all sports, well, yeah, <laughs> once in a while we do that. Okay, so we're doing that. Well, we're you, doing you, sports talk for a little. What you also have uh, something in common? I think most of the people do. Is that, um, and you should know this, Santana. Uh, Mike had, had been a lifelong direct TV customer forever, mm-hmm. and he, and so has Rob. And, mm-hmm. and the one thing that I, when I'm working either on your show or I'm working with Mike or Rob, they're always bitching about their cable providers. Oh, right? man. And, oh. and um, I got to go back to uh, direct TV. So gotta, I, they, they forced me into it down so here. You're going back old... to direct TV. I'm trying to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're, you're, you don't like direct TV? Well, honestly, I love direct TV. I'm one of those guys that. I um, love direct If TV. it's not broke, don't fix it. But mine's been broke for years. I'm. I, <laughs> I, I have the Genie 2 now, and I should... should oh, the boxes should, aren't talking? I shouldn't skip the Genie 1, because my mom said, well, I have the Genie 1, and it's perfect. The Genie 2 is just... It just cuts off in the middle of big games, and I'm like... Oh, I'm it's sitting technology. There, Technology's to, <laughs> getting too far ahead of yes, us, Santana. Yes. That's what's so, happening so with I found my So I found myself in this situation, I and I didn't share this with no one, on, not even on my show. Uh, I solved my problem. I kept the Genie 2, and I went and bought me a, a fire stick. 
and I have my fire stick set up where I can watch cable TV. And if the genie goes out on me, click here to fire stick, and I'm talking about I'm watching the same channel. And the fire stick yeah. is streaming, right? Yeah, fire streaming. stick is streaming. And right. this thing yeah. that I have is streaming on all levels. I mean, I have over. 2,000 plus channels, movies, <laughs> pay-per-view. The I'm not sure stick? if I should be, be sharing this with you guys because I think it might be illegal that I have all this. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if my Genie 2 decides to act up, I'm moving to the fire. And and trust me, I watch the fire stick more than I watch you know direct TV because I'm, I'm a movie head and I like to sit on the couch normally when I work out and have my lunch. What's your favorite movie of all time? I can't, I don't have many. I don't. Ha- I have so many movies I watch, I can't pick one. Most recent that you're uh, loving. <sighs> can't think of more I'm an old head so I like to go back like I would I would be the guy on fire stick and I would click the button where I can talk into and I say Michael Douglas and I want to bring up all Michael Douglas movies and I just go and watch all of the 80s and 90s movies but Great. I can say Wall my Street. all my all time favorite would have to be uh, Tony Montana, you know. Um, you oh, know, Scarface. Scarface. I, I so you feel like, like the gratuitous violence. That's cool. I like look, that. Look, I was too. born That's in 79 cool. in Miami. And oh, my in the God. 80s, the right near yes. the, you were born the year before and, the big boat lift. Yes. <laughs> and I remember the streets being wild as a kid. I don't know how my memory is what it is, but to see that movie and to say it has a little truth in it, yes, Miami was, you know, cocaine heaven. I can say that, you know, for a long time. And. and it was wild like that in that area that I grew up in. So it brought so, so many wild. memories I to me. That. Wow. No oh, my God. That's a great movie, too. That, that, I'll never forget that movie. That's a movie with one of the scariest scenes, too, yeah. in it, where you're just like, <gasps> I don't want to look at that. Oh, oh my death. God. Chainsaw. <laughs> Chainsaw. <laughs> oh, my God. Chainsaw. Hey, speaking of technology, and, I, and I, so, I'm so mad I forgot about this. What's that? Yesterday, uh, I go up. I talked about the, the guys that I'm playing golf with, and uh, Carla comes up to the golf course in her... Active wear. Mm. Active wear. Active his wear. wife. His wife. Carla oh, wearing active wear. And she says, are you all right? She got, uh, I'm putting my phone into my golf bag. And apparently I pressed something, Oscar, up in the upper left-hand corner mm-hmm. that says SOS. Oh, no. Do you know anything about oh, this? Do you yes. know what I'm talking Emergency about? Yes, you said be cow. Cow. Excuse me. Apple, Apple, let me just tell I don't need your effing help. I swear to God, I don't need you to Look, do this. To, like to, make, to make my wife like I've fallen. fallen. Like I'm in a ditch between the house and the <laughs> golf cart. You know? Which is six feet where my elderly ass gets up to the golf cart. She comes out, are you all right? She said, I got a call from Lee County Police. <gasps> what? Yes, the police yes. get involved. You're it's an listed, emergency. Uh, yeah, apparently, I, Apple in there. I don't need any extra help. But well, that was if a trial I, run. You, you actually, <laughs> you actually had a trial run, and it it, it did what it, it said worked. it would do. It worked. I, disa- I disabled it. I disabled it now because did I didn't. Carla so, have a hip uh, like a, ni- a nice skip and a and a bop to her walk up to you? No, She's like, finally, no, Carla's, Carla, the the dog and Carla. Yeah, because the the dog we lost the dog this week. Last week, she's still she's kind of having the delayed reaction, oh, so man. she's moping around and she goes, "Are you okay? I just got a call from." I said, "What are you going to call for?" And I'm up there with all my, uh, you know, all the the children that I play with. Did up the there. police and ask if going, you remember? And all their eyebrows are up near their <laughs> hairline, going, oh, "What's going on, Mike? Why is your wife up here?" You know, it's like mom coming. Yeah. Why did mom come to the playground? <laughs> did Why is mom coming to the playground right now? <laughs> did the police ask you if you remembered the buddy buddy this weekend? <laughs> 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 it's te- te- too much technology. I know you it, look the genie. I it's still better <laughs> the than genie. Ex- excrapity, which I have down here. But I am starting to get into the uh, the button where you can talk into yeah. it. You can do that with the fire stick. Yeah. I can do that. Uh, what I have, and I, that's why uh, my pick to click right now. True Detective. Ah, uh, it's wonderful to see. Mm, that's good. Little too little many, slow, little heavy little on slow. the uh, little slow with the flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Little too much with the flashbacks, but still better than a lot of stuff that's out there. But uh, anyway, please don't help me. I don't. I didn't fall. I didn't fall down there because Carla thought that you know somehow in the six minutes that it took me to get over here, I got out of the golf cart and went you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my neck and my back. <laughs> I'm on my back like a turtle. <laughs> God, I can't get right. up. Yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna we're here oh, with uh, oh, Santana uh, Moss, and we will be uh, taking a little break and coming back. Can you hang out for uh, news you may not need I'm with here, us? Man. The, uh, Let me, you uh, know. That's good. That's Love good. it. Well, well, thank you very much. Once you got uh, we'll me, take you a got break. Me. All right, good. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. More broadcasting. The Mike O'Mara Show, 2019, the year of Pony Boy. 
Tune in and witness his thrilling transformation. A new Matthew. Stronger, yeah. better, yeah. more determined. Maybe. He's replaced his cigarettes with excellence. <laughs> this is the year we watch Matthew bloom. Don't miss the metamorphosis. The Michael Mara Show. Always improving for you. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by our TMOS bonus packages. Today is January 31st. Fact! It is the last day of January. Yes, dear hearts, the end of the mighty month of January. Goodbye, old calendar friend. Uh. <laughs> Don't be sad that January is over. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing except the laughs and memories brought to you by the bonus show. You can buy it right now, bitches. <laughs> If you don't, you're missing out on an extra bit of content every week, you moron. <laughs> Remember, the future of our show depends on it. It's the most fun we have each week, and it still has that yummy flavor that screams almond milk. Yum! Just go to MikeOmeraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all our bonus content, and you'll be helping TMOS. So please dry your tear-soaked eyes and buy it. And we thank you. News! News! Boo. All right, this is uh, kind of dovetailing uh, from what uh, we talked about before. Last year, North Dakota was the only state outside of New England that was rooting for the Patriots. Can you believe that? Mm. Uh, huh. Over Philadelphia. But Tom Brady actually has more supporters this time around. For starters, there's Louisiana. Uh, definitely not going to root for the L.A. Rams because of the way the Saints-Rams-NFC championship game, uh, game went down. North Dakota is still in the Patriots camp for whatever reason. The other states pulling for uh, Brady uh, include Michigan, Kentucky, West Virginia, uh, North and South Carolina. North and South Carolina would be a Redskins uh yeah, area. Even with the Carolina Panthers, you've got right the radio network. The original radio there. network yeah. went south. Right. That's yeah. right. Uh, and Alaska rooting for uh, mm. the they, have, they have TV up there now. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> TV and moose soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, so I, in, in addition to Massachusetts, and by the way, the uh, you know being from that area with uh, Maine and Connecticut and all that. You got the New England fan that now resembles, as I said before, kind of the uh, the Yankee fan. Yeah. Uh, everyone that I asked yesterday, so, so you ready for the big win? Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, got, we this. We got we, this. We're pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike. We're pretty sure we're going to do well. Yeah, we are. We are. Uh, we're we're going to do fine. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty sure we're going to kick their ass. Absolutely. I feel yeah. like I'm watching you know, Marky Mark right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like what my impression of New England. Yeah, Tom Brady, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, he's, uh, he's going to do all right, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Appreciate that. Uh, the other 35 states are all pulling for the Rams. In California's case, it's because they actually like the Rams. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, for everyone else, uh, it's not wanting the Patriots to win. Even yeah. Missouri would rather root for the city that took their team that's that's amazing. The Missouri is actually rooting for uh, the, uh, the the Rams. Is it is it common side. for the Super Bowl to be fueled by who you don't want to win? Well, uh, you know how I root for football. Right? That's true. Yeah, you are yeah. the antagonist. I can't say that with our guest here. No, of course not. I can't guess that, that I'm bitter. <laughs> I can't guess. I can't tell him that I'm bitter that I was replaced by a sports talk today. And Mike, you're you're covering. I take it out on the Redskins fans. You're covering but, it well. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, moving right along. Uh, Tony Romo. All right. Tony Romo, controversial figure in the broadcast yes. booth, Santana. People love him. People hate him. But uh, he was popular, uh, you know, especially with Redskins fans as a punching bag during his days. But as a sportscaster, as a color guy on a telecast, he has become a modern marvel. Let me tell you why. Yes. The Wall Street Journal took a deep dive into Romo's broadcast this season, reviewing all 2,599 plays from every game he called. They counted the number of times he made a specific prediction as opposed to a general observation. That's like calling a play. According to their calculations, Romo made 72 play predictions this season, and he was correct 68% of the wow. time. Wow. That means statistically he's better at predicting NFL plays from the booth than he was at reading defenses and <laughs> completing don't passes do that on Romo. the field. Because <laughs> do I'm, I'm a fan of Romo. I'm a fan of Romo. Being up there, though, being yeah. up there in the press box, 
Do you and you can watch the, the see the field in front of you? Does it make it? Uh, no. I, I, let's say it, may, it, it doesn't, doesn't make no. it easier. I think Romo okay. is a, he has a special talent. He's a quarterback. Really? He was a, surprised he was, at that. He was better of a quarterback. He, he didn't get the praise enough that. He made guys better than what people give him, you know. Okay. Uh, half of the reason why Des Bryant was who he was because of Romo. People yeah. found – I found it odd when I hear people say, well, Des Bryant can't separate no more. He never separated. Romo threw him open all the time. And for years I talked and praised When, when you say threw him open, do you mean, mean like – he found he, ways back shoulder, him throw it up high. He made so sure he that the ball – he placed the ball to make it look like – He placed the ball okay. perfectly for the talent that he had. He knew how to give the guys that – who was out there making plays from the ball? He knew how he knew if he had a burn him or throw it in front of him. When T.O. was there, he threw that thing out there because T.O. was going to make that play. He was going to run that ball down. With Dez, hey, he's going to catch that 50 50 ball 99% of the time. He threw that 50 50 ball back shoulder. He found ways to say, hey, he's a strong catcher. He has strong hands. When he was in traffic, he knew he can count on Dez. So I don't think he get enough credit. The one thing okay. that I hated about Romo and his, his stint with the uh, Dallas Cowboys, the defense was crap every year. Right. And yeah. they called him or they they always gave him the slack of saying, you know, the flack of saying that, hey, you didn't win the game. You didn't get us to the playoffs. It was a defense fault. So Romo should get a lot of credit for what he did. And I think what he's doing now in the booth is just from just studying and just knowing the game. All right. That's cool. Oh. I like that. Uh, it, you know, I just wish he wouldn't scream all the time. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's a there's a 23 year old woman named uh, Noor Alfala. Uh, she definitely appears to have a type. This is a, I'm okay. just giving you the story as right. I have it. She made some headlines last year. She's 23 yeah. when she dated Mick Jagger, Oops. who is 74 years old. Oh, wow. Nice. That's is, like you and Carla. <laughs> That's a 21-year age difference. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Mike's never had a number one record. <laughs> There's a difference. It's, it's just not the same. Have a guest you just pick on me all the time. And Monday, she was <laughs> spotted. This is true. Okay. You're at 23. Spotted leaving a restaurant with 88-year-old Clint Eastwood. No! <laughs> oh, my God. Lord they got into a car together. Here's the weird part, but he was driving, and she was in the back seat. This is the, I, oh, he was anyways, an Uber. She, he was an Uber. Uh, she, <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's a Uber he's going Uber tonight. I saw the same report, Mike. When, when Clint left the restaurant... He was in the left lane going 40 miles an hour with his blinker on. <laughs> <laughs> She's giving the just friends rap. She says, quote, there's no relationship. We're family friends. Sounds a little weird. And my family was there, and that's it. My parents were there. Other friends were there. Trust me, there is no relationship yeah, with an 88-year-old. <laughs> Have you <laughs> seen good. or read about this movie that he has out now? A couple weeks ago it came out. Uh, the Mule. The Mule. came out at Christmas time. I'm actually trying to go see it. One he of has I'd two like to scenes see that in it on my list. that are threesomes. What? He has two yeah. threesome scenes in it. All right. So maybe you could yeah. handle that. Good play. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so he's not player. directing these movies just to be movies, man. He want to make sure that he's he's that guy in these movies, it, man. I, hey, if, if, at least they say he, they're threesomes. I think one of the girls might be a nurse. <laughs> if, if he's 88 and he's still, hey, more power to yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, if you're not worried about the so-called deep fakes, have you heard about this where they put the... Uh, the, the face on someone and they can put a video yeah, out yeah, there yeah, that yeah. looks like the person. Mm. If you're not worried about it, you're not paying attention. Listen to this. A deep fake is a video. You take one person's face, superimpose it on someone else's body. We talked about this a few months back mm -hmm. where it's gotten more sophisticated and better and better that you cannot tell. The technology right. is already advanced enough that you can make them virtually flawless at a time when fake news is already a huge problem. Listen to this. The point was really driven home yesterday. I urge everybody in our audience to watch this video. It's stunning. It's Jennifer Lawrence giving an interview, but she's got Steve Buscemi's face on it. Oh, no. She, wow. And it is terrifying. It is Jennifer Lawrence's voice, Steve Buscemi's face. It is, you have, look, I am telling you about it. I'm not showing it to you right yeah, now, that's, but you have to. Stuff. See, it is so scary. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, the result looks like a human being who actually exists, but of course, it's also a human being who should never, ever exist. <laughs> if you see, it's like her in the dress. It's, oh, what a way! It'll to, blow your mind. It'll yeah, this video will blow your like mind. that technology where you're like, yeah. if we can do this, we can do anything. It's truly amazing. Uh, just because you wake up at four o'clock in the morning doesn't mean you are a morning person. Trust me on that one. But hey, if you are a morning person, here's some good news for you. According to a new study, morning people are happier overall than people who stay up late. 
And that's not only bad news for night owls, they also have a higher risk of depression and schizophrenia. Mm. So, uh, Oscar. Forget about it. Yeah. Oscar, you would Go be the bed night at owl. 2 a.m. Um, I'm a morning yeah. person then. Yeah. I got problems. Are you a morning or a night person? Morning person. Well, that's good news. I'm wired up. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm like I'm a the guy person. that go to sleep at three and be up at seven, like ready, you know. All right. I'm well. I'm a morning person, but I think it's because of uh, you know it, it's demographics. It's it the go, fact it, that all, all old people get up. You at got five a little guy too, right? He yeah. Wakes up. And it I goes back. And you did a morning show for years. It. You did a morning show. I did show a morning for show. Years. Yeah, but I mean, I, if I wanted to sleep till eight o'clock in the morning, I couldn't do it. I really, I don't think I could do it unless you really plied me with rum the night before or something like. that. I could do it if I got a bathroom break. <laughs> you want one right now? No, 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 no. I mean, I oh. get up at about 4.30 and take a leak, okay. and then I could go back and go sleep till 10. All right, thank you. Uh, and now a little something, something. The cops in Austin, Texas, got a call on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, this is a really bad kicker line, but I... All right, all right, we myself. stand by. Cops in Austin got a call Tuesday afternoon about a 26-year-old woman named Dovey Nichols. Dovey was sitting at an outdoor patio table, and she was using a love toy. Lord have mercy on oh, no. himself. Dovey. Lord, out, Dovey. Out there, uh, out there for, for everybody to see. What's now, she when doing, they, man? When they, when they arrested her. Isolate that. What's she doing? I'd like to save that. When they arrested her, uh, she kept going at it in the back seat of the uh, police car Whoa. by thrusting herself against the seat and moaning in the squad car. Uh, she has been charged with indecent exposure. When asked about it, uh, the cop said, well, it's just the same old grind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. Pretty good. Good for me. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the audio vault and Rob Speedway. On the Mike Havetta Show. For your consideration. Brie, American, Gouda, Mild Cheddar, Camembert, Provolone, Baby Bell, Parmesan, Mascarpone, Burrata, Feta, Ricotta, Briere, Asiago, Gorgonzola, Havarti, Monterey Jack, Stilton, Swiss, Fontina, Pecorino Romano, and Buffalo Mozzarella. She didn't name all of the cheeses, but she named enough of the cheeses. She's Madeline Massiella, <laughs> the queen of cheese, only on The Mike O'Mara Show. Oh, man. <laughs> Nothing quite like just just linguine with a, a little olive oil and some grated Masiello. <laughs> so tasty. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by our shopping center. The big name is this weekend. Oh, the big game. Sorry. Game. Read. <laughs> I'm Mike O'Mara, and I can't read. Oh. Thank you. The big game is this weekend. It's so important, we can't even mention it by name in this commercial. That's you still not able to say the... Why Why mess with it? Super Bowl. Don't say it! Uh, so instead, let's talk about the most magnificent carnivorous bird in the sky. Let's talk about the superb owl. <laughs> let's celebrate the superb owl. Let's declare February 3rd Superb Owl Day. <laughs> And you can get all the stuff you need for your superb owl party at MikeOmerashow.com. Our site features Macy's, Target, and Walmart. When you shop these retailers, were you drinking when you wrote this? No, it's just a joke I love. <laughs> all right. Uh, when you shop at uh, these retailers through our portal, you're supporting the Mike O'Mara Show. So if you're getting together with your friends to watch the superb owl, stock up on food and fun at the TMOS Shopping Center. Oscar, what's your impression of this joke that he likes so bad? Well, it's it's a Rob joke. It's it's perfect for him. So I'm wondering why can't we say Super Bowl? <laughs> I'm not saying Super Bowl. I just said it, but I don't want to say Super Bowl ever again. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> you nothing. Know, the world out. Shop Macy's, Target, and Walmart through our website. Thank you very much. Let's open up, let's open up the audio vault with Rob Spiewak. Take it away, Mike. Rob. Do you have your detonator handy? I do. Oh, good. Because guess what? Outside, it's very cold. cold. My teeth are chattering. <laughs> That. I don't love make, it. Don't make a novelty song, DJ. I need about that song. I need it every time I step out the house and step out my car. Colt, one Colt, more time. Play it again. Play it again. Go ahead. That's how I feel when I walked out. Turns out, I, I did some research. That's not actually the Beatles. That's a guy pretending to be in the Beatles. So very exciting. The not actual Thank Beatles. Thank you for clarifying. However, that. it is cold outside, and everyone is being very protective. No school in Loudoun County today because yes. of extreme temperatures. That's a good idea, right? Yeah, I think so. Why not? Not according to Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. You know, now we cancel school for cold. Come on now. 
I mean, it's, there's no ice going with it or any snow. I mean, what happens to America? We're getting soft, and I do appreciate it's better to err on the side of being safe, and, and, I, and I'm being only slightly facetious. It does concern me a little bit that in America, on this and any number of other fronts, we're sending messages to our young people that if life is hard, you can curl up in the fetal position somewhere in a warm place and just <laughs> wait till ass. it stops being hard, and oh, that oh. just isn't All right, reality. wait a minute. Wait That's a minute. A, yeah. I, Oh I God. line up on the pussification of America and the sure. softness of America. Sure. We are too soft. Uh, but if you are dealing with a school bus and a dangerous wind chill, yeah. I'm not sure what it is in Kentucky. I, I'd have to see this. I mean, I mean, really? Yeah. That's but not making what's You're not alone, Mike. Guy? You're not alone. You know who else is up in arms? The Ooh. very angry Al Roker. And by the way, I just have to say, this nitwit governor uh, in Kentucky <laughs> yeah. saying that, oh, we're, we're weak. We're, these are kids <laughs> who are going to be in sub-zero wind chills. No. Cancel school. Stop it. You know, adults, if they want to be out there, that's great. These are our children. You know, I'm glad you're not a teacher. I'm glad you're not a teacher. Nobody's yes, right. I mean, it's a, you know, if you're not used to dealing with this in that state, and I'd venture to say Kentucky is not used to sub zero yeah. weather, you don't do it. And when you're talking about the Midwest, what, what is it, like 10 minutes you can get frostbite like, out there? Oh, yeah. There, like, you know? e- even better this morning on the Today Show in the 8 o'clock hour, yeah. they had Al on an icebreaker. And he's trying to do the weather. <laughs> like a literal icebreaker. The Today Show. This is how much did they Roker dis- was on an icebreaker? Yeah, they disrespect the man so bad. And he's trying to do... He's like 130 gonna, years old and I they got him say, still doing the it's, stand-up. It's minus 50 on an icebreaker. Well, and he's trying... Perkins left like the network because he didn't like to go to Atlanta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when he really? tried to do the weather, you could tell that the air was so cold he was gasping to get anything yeah. out. Yeah. It is it when you're doing a stand up and you're in that kind of cold weather, when you're outside and you're trying to speak into these microphones, the mouth does necessarily yeah. that well. <laughs> You know? And the That's lungs crazy. start to, when you take a breath in, and it happens when it gets real hot outside too. If your lungs register temperature when you inhale, mm-hmm. you cannot talk. You just What's can't the do cold, it. What, you, I mean, uh, you played a million football games. What's the coldest uh, experience you ever had? Where do you remember it? Was it? Yes. Were you ever at a game I'm where it was thinking just thinking about it right now? Okay. Two, 2013 season, the last game of the season, we played at Giant Stadium. The coldest game. I thought I caught, um, you name it, pneumonia that game. I, I was so sick after that game. I, rem- I remember being in the huddle and Trent Williams telling me, Tanner, just let's leave the game. And we was getting killed. And I was just sitting So did you have a little something before the game started? <laughs> or was normally, it just uh... Normally, I'm superstitious. So I dress the same way re- re- regardless if it's cold or not. I don't like wearing tights under my pants. It, it, it kind of restricts me from moving. So I said, hey, I'm going to lather up in this thing that they gave us that so supposedly hold the warmth in. And I did that thinking that, hey, that should be able to secure me. I always wear sleeves. So I had my normal sleeves on that was a little thicker, had a little thermal underneath my pads and my, my normal socks and thought that, you know, with some feet warmers and hand warmers, I should be okay. And the game was wet and cold. Oh, I mean, the ball, it was icy. It was like it was like slushy. And I remember sitting in there chattering. <laughs> <laughs> and, Trent, and Trent Williams told me um, numerous of times, like, Tanner, just leave the game. And being the guy that I am, I, and I think that's one of the reasons. I think now when I hear the fans talking about why they appreciate me and they, you know, look up to some of the things I did, I could have easily tapped out. I could have yeah. easily said, look, I'm not, I'm not a big you know, factor of this game. I'm a, I'm coming in on third down. At that time, I believe Pierre Garçon has said, "Hey, deuces, I'm done. I'm on the sideline." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure, but I know it was just me and Aldrick Robinson in the game. And I'm looking at Aldrick like we're the last two standing, and like <laughs> this game doesn't mean nothing to us. <laughs> Look, I wanted every inch of. Every play because you never know when it's your you last did. one. You know, you never know. know when your I last know. one. I'm getting them into I, those exactly. years. I'm like, hey, this is 2013. Look, right. think about it. The late next year, I was done. That was my last year. So, I just wanted to be out there for my guys, win, lose, a draw. But I was freezing, and I remember when the ball was coming my way. I think I dropped a couple balls, and I was like, I, I'm not caring about catching the ball right now. I just want to get out of this game. <laughs> And that there was the are Redskins game fans ever. that are loving this right <laughs> oh, now so, so much. Thank you for that. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. So man. while we're talking cold, Mike, what about hard-hitting coverage of the cold? One man okay. actually turned this super frozen banana into a makeshift hammer. There you go. He turned a banana into a hammer. That's how cold it is. But that's not what we're going to close with. We're going to close right. with a trip to Budapest. 
a Hungarian water faucet. By the way, that's not a category. Okay. Could be a Hungarian water faucet that every time you turn on the hot water sounds like a man groaning. We have this video <laughs> on our Facebook page. Tell me you wouldn't call a plumber yesterday if every time you turned on your faucet you heard this. <laughs> What the? It's also the sound Rob makes at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, but then back to bed and I can sleep till 10. That's your magic audio vault. Have a good Thursday, everybody. Hey, uh, Santana Moss, what an yeah. honor to have you on Thank the show you, to Thank talk you. football, to talk everything. Thank you and for uh, me, man. please, you, you know, when you're in Washington, come by. You're welcome anytime to see us. And good luck with your uh, podcast Thank you so and, much. Uh, and everything else you do. You're, you know, Oscar has said so many wonderful things about it. And I, I, I was glad to finally guys. get a chance to meet you. And uh, Rob Spiewak and uh, Oscar Santana, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow, right? Yeah, yes. we'll be around. Yeah. Is that the way you it got, goes? You got uh, political persuasions coming up as well. Political persuasions this week. Oh, the Chris Frank show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. we're going to talk about maybe uh, not necessarily just Trump this week. We're going to talk about uh, some people that are getting into the fray, so it should be interesting. Also, we'll ask that. Chris the coldest he's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> On a CNN stand-up. <laughs> if you have a message you would uh, like to hear in our Tuesday mailbag, send it to Rob with two Bs at MikeOmeraShow.com. Remember, the TMOS bonus show makes a great gift even for yourself. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com. Click the banner that says Gift Bonus for Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak, Mike O'Mara. Thanking you for your continued amazing support for the best part of your day, the Mike O'Mara Show. So long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeO'MaraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. That's going to do it for all of us here at Channel 4 News. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy.